Coming up today, a fourth person in Korea dies of the MERS virus as the number of confirmed cases increases by five, bringing the total to 41. Hundreds more remain in quarantine. North Korea state-run TV airs footage showing Kim Jong-un watching an underwater test fire of a submarine-launched ballistic missile as the regime looks to quell doubts over its true capabilities. First, a former official from Korea's ruling party has been arrested on suspicion of taking kickbacks from a businessman during the 2012 presidential election. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Hello to our viewers around the world. It's 6 a.m. on Friday, June 5th here in Seoul. Thanks as always for joining us. I'm Mark Broom. We start with the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome or MERS outbreak here in Korea. Five more cases were confirmed early this Friday morning, bringing the total number of cases to 41. On top of this, a fourth person, a 76-year-old man, died of the virus overnight, but no word yet on whether he had any underlying health conditions. Concerns are also rising in Seoul after the city learned that a doctor at a local hospital took part in a large-scale conference and other social activities over the weekend despite showing minor symptoms of the virus. Seoul Mayor Park Won-soon, who you just saw there, uh, who held an emergency press conference late Thursday, said the doctor reportedly came into direct and indirect contact with more than 1,500 Seoul residents before being confirmed with the infection three days later on Monday. The mayor slammed the central government for withholding such information with the city government. However, soon after the mayor said that, the Ministry of Health and Welfare refuted his claim, saying they did give the notice to the city earlier. Now, in other developments, health authorities are soon expected to release the final test result on a Korean Air Force officer stationed at the Osan Air Base whose initial test showed he did have the virus. If the second test comes back positive, the officer will be the first MERS case in the Korean military. Now, health authorities have so far placed over 1,600 people in quarantine, about 1,500 in their homes, and the rest in state-run medical facilities. In another measure, more than 1,100 schools have decided to temporarily close for the remainder of this week, so for today, really, with the majority of them in Gyeonggi-do province where the first MERS case was reported. As of now, though, we must stress that there are no known cases of people contracting MERS outside of hospitals. Now, this MERS outbreak has done something few thought would be possible, really. It has brought Korea's rival political parties closer together in an effort to contain the virus. They met with medical experts on Thursday to try and formulate ways to resolve the crisis and prevent future outbreaks. Uh, Jim Young Gil reports. The ruling's Henry party said it will push for a hospital dedicated to dealing with infectious diseases and allocate funds to counter the MERS outbreak. Countries like Hong Kong and Singapore have special quarantine hospitals. We'll allocate special budgets this year to improve the country's ability to handle contagious disease, including the construction of a dedicated quarantine hospital. The main opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy also called on the government to consider leveling up the country's epidemic alert and promised to work with the Senuri Party to ensure funding for all containment efforts. If the presidential house of Cheongwade demands supplementary budgets from the National Assembly to resolve the MERS crisis, we're more than willing to fully cooperate. Medical experts said the government needs to increase support for the country's hospitals, especially in one area. Medium and small-sized hospitals need full support with medical supplies within two to three days. Even the bigger university hospitals are running out of supplies for both patients and medical staff.
Both parties promised to help the government quell growing public anxiety and rebuild trust. The Parliamentary Health Committee and Special MERS Committees will work closely with the Health Ministry to share more information about MERS with the public. Tim young Arirang News. Now, in other news, Korea's gross national income grew at its fastest pace in almost six years in the first quarter of this year. But the dramatic rise in the key indicator of the population's purchasing power is not translating to greater consumption. Our Shin Zemin explains why. The Bank of Korea says the nation's gross national income in the first three months of this year rose 4.2 percent on quarter, reaching over 339 billion U.S. dollars. That's the fastest growth recorded since the second quarter of 2009, when it spiked 5 percent. The central bank largely attributes the increase to cheaper oil prices that have pushed down import prices more than export prices. The lower prices, in turn, have given Korean consumers more leeway to spend. But the stronger purchasing power hasn't boosted domestic demand, with private consumption edging up a mere 0.6 percent in the first quarter this year from a quarter earlier. Facilities investment ended up rising just 0.2 percent. We saw an increase in savings, but not in domestic investment. That indicates that consumer sentiment is shaky, leading to lower spending. The central bank says the economy also grew in the first quarter of this year, but just by 0.8 percent, a pickup from the previous quarter. But it's still below 1 percent, leaving experts questioning whether the economy is on a steady path to recovery. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. President Park Geun-hye held summit talks with her Senegalese counterpart in Seoul on Thursday. The presidential office said the meeting was the result of Korea's efforts to put greater focus on co-prosperity with Africa. Our Choi Yusun reports. Senegalese President Macky Sall first presented a mid- to long-term development plan for his country in 2013, consisting of 26 projects in infrastructure, energy, education, agriculture and tourism. While Senegal will formally see Korean investment in that plan, estimated at 10 billion U.S. dollars, at a business leader's luncheon on Friday, the governments of Seoul and Dakar agreed to work together to secure Korean participation. President Bak said Korea has chosen Senegal as one of the countries with which it will strengthen development cooperation next year, and she hopes it will allow the two sides to enhance their bilateral cooperation. President Saul highlighted the growing friendship and trust between their countries since forging diplomatic relations in 1962. Injecting nearly $500 million of its Economic Development Cooperation Fund, Korea is close to completing construction of two ships that will travel between Senegal's southern and northern regions. It plans to commit some 900 million more this year to further develop Senegal's maritime infrastructure. Through such projects, President Buck's office says Korea is laying down a foundation for further cooperation with a country that holds great potential in maritime affairs and fisheries in West Africa. The two sides also agreed to work together on building a free economic zone in Senegal and developing the African nation's agricultural sector. Che Yusan, Arirang News. Prosecutors have arrested a former ruling party official as part of their widening investigation into the so-called Songwan Jong bribery list. The prosecution said on Friday that it has put the 54-year-old former official with the surname Kim under an emergency arrest. They did so on Thursday night on suspicion of receiving 200 million won, that's roughly 180,000 US dollars in illicit political funds from the late chairman of Gyeongnam Enterprises sometime during the 2012 presidential election. Kim was in the Senuri Party's election camp at the time of the race. Prosecutors, however, say they are yet to figure out the exact timing of the alleged money exchange. North Korea state television has aired new video of Kim Jong-un watching the test firing of a submarine launched ballistic missile. In the footage, the North Korean leader is seen aboard a military vessel observing the missile being fired from underwater. 
as you can see there. Now, last month, the North said it had test-fired the missile, but there had been some scepticism about the authenticity of previously released still photos and a heavily edited video purporting to show the firing. In this latest release, North Korea State Television still doesn't mention a date or location for the test, but said it released the new video to dispel several countries' doubts about its missile capabilities. Now, Kim Jong-un himself is quoted in the report as saying the test firing was a sight to behold and a great success. North Korea is under UN sanctions banning it from developing or using ballistic missile technology. The United States has called on South Korea to play a bigger role in opposing Beijing's territorial claims in the South China Sea. The issue could pose a fresh dilemma for, for Seoul as it finds itself stuck between its two closest partners. For this report, we turn to our Huang sang -i. Speaking at a seminar in Washington on Wednesday, U.S. Assistant Secretary of State Daniel Russell slammed China's land reclamation projects in the South China Sea. Pointing out that Korea is not directly involved in the dispute, Russell said Seoul has all the more reason to speak out because it's speaking not in self-interest but in support of universal principles. He added Korea must assume the role of a major stakeholder in the international order. This is the first time a senior American official has asked Seoul to get involved, and it comes as Washington steps up pressure against Beijing on this issue. Last week, U.S. Defense Secretary Ashton Carter urged Beijing to immediately halt its island-building activities in the South China Sea. U.S. officials say China's reclamation efforts have sped up, creating artificial islands that have expanded by 1,500 acres since last year. On Thursday, Seoul's foreign ministry expressed hopes for a peaceful resolution to the dispute, but maintained its distance on the matter. Our government hopes for peace and stability in the South China Sea by a complete and effective implementation of the Declaration on the Conduct of Parties in the South China Sea and a swift changing of a code of conduct between China and the ASEAN countries. Some say President Park Geun-hye's trip to Washington later this month could be an opportunity for U.S. President Barack Obama to bring up the issue again. If so, the territorial disputes may put Korea in a very difficult position between its two superpower partners. Hwang Sang-hee, Arirang News. Now, a new OECD report shows that, in comparison to other member nations, people in Korea feel less satisfied with their lives. And while there is a great importance on social relations, a relatively large number of Koreans say they don't know who they could rely on in times of need. How Son Jung-in reports. The Better Life Index, published every year by the OECD, rates the 34 member nations, as well as Brazil and Russia, on 11 variables that contribute to a high quality of life, including income, health and life satisfaction. This year, Korea ranked 27th, down two notches from last year. Australia remained at the top, followed by Sweden, Norway, Switzerland and Denmark. Korea scored badly in five indicators, including social connections, subjective well-being, health status and work-life balance, with all ranking in the lowest 20 percent. When asked if they had someone they could rely on in a time of need, only 72 percent of Koreans said yes. That was the lowest figure in the OECD, which had an average score of 88 percent. In the work-life balance category, Korea ranked one from bottom in the OECD at 33rd, with nearly a fifth of adults working 50 hours or more a week on average. When it came to life satisfaction, which measures how people evaluate their life on a scale from 0 to 10, Koreans had a score of 5.8, lower than the OECD average of 6.6. However, despite its low satisfaction ranking, the report showed Korea remained above average in civic engagement, personal security, jobs and education. The report says these factors play a key role in providing individuals with skills to participate effectively in society and in the economy. Son Jung-in, Arirang News.
Now, marking the occasion of Patriots and Veterans Month, as well as the 60th anniversary of Korea's Memorial Day this weekend, the National Cemetery in Seoul has become the site of a huge light installation. And Na Hyung-kyung has the story. It's a site you won't want to miss. Three vertical columns of light will be lit every day through Memorial Day on Saturday in remembrance of those who sacrificed their lives to bring freedom and peace to the Korean Peninsula. The Ministry of Patriots and Veterans Affairs says the beams will be projected straight up into the sky after sunset each day. I hope many people, by looking at these three sets of beams, will remember and thank those who brighten our history. Each of the three columns represents something different. The first set of beams is dedicated to those who have fought to protect the country, for example, those who gave their lives in the Korean War. The second pays tribute to those who have devoted their lives to the country's security, such as police and military officers. And the last set represents the wish for a peaceful reunification of the two Koreas. In addition, around 25-thousand small lights are planted on the ground around the gravestones in the cemetery. They will be lit for the entire month to remind visitors that each and every person buried here gave their lives to make this country a better and safer place to live. The installation marks the beginning of a massive 70-day-long campaign to show appreciation for the people who dedicated their lives to Korea. The campaign will run through Liberation Day on August 15th and will include a massive parade in the heart of Seoul later this month. Na Hyun-kyung, Arirang News. Well, that's all we have for now. I'm Mark Broom. Have a great weekend and thank you as always for watching. We do hope to see you on the same time on Monday. Until then, goodbye.